Grace and peace to you. I don't know about you, but this time of coronavirus has really felt like a roller coaster. Roller coaster of information, roller coaster of emotions. A couple weeks ago, I talked about the importance of laughter and humor. And today I want to focus on something very different. Today I want to focus on grief. And I completely understand if at this point you turn it off because you can't deal with this right now. Or if at some point during my devotions here you want to turn it off, that's okay. I was uh, with some colleagues the other day on a Zoom call. And the one who was speaking, you know, in, in, the, in the call all of a sudden became very emotional and she had to pause for a moment. And she shed a few tears, then she gathered herself, she apologized, and then she went on saying, you know, the emotions are right at the surface now. I think the adrenaline of the first few weeks has worn off, and now the reality is catching up. So like she realized in that moment, I think all of us are living with this underlying level of stress and grief. And it's fairly constant, but right under the surface. But all of us have had some sort of disruption or discontinuation of our regular routines or our interactions. So on the flip side, I have been inspired and amazed to see the ways individuals and groups have risen above and found creative ways to carry on. But sometimes when that grief catches our attention, we need to pay attention to it. The grief, the pain is acute. So sometimes we do need to set aside the jokes and the busyness and come to face to face with the grief. Within the co-op, we've experienced two deaths and a critical hospitalization within the past week. So that adds a significant level of grief onto that that background level, that under the surface level that we're all experiencing as a society. It's a grief that's exacerbated by the fact that we can't get together right now. We can't get together for hugs and comfort and remembrances. We cannot share tears and laughter and stories around a table of grace. This isolation compounds the grief that is already very serious in the death of a loved one or a serious hospitalization. There's just no way around it though. The situation is out of our control. And when grief presents itself, like that camp song from our youth, we can't go under it, we can't go around it, we have to go through it. So I wanna give you some tools and we are going to have a litany as well to engage both both your mind and your heart. So first, a couple of things to engage your brain to get yourself thinking about grief. First of all, I have to tell you that grief is normal. Let me say it again. Grief is normal. I'm always amazed how often people apologize for their tears. There's no need to apologize. There's nothing to be sorry for. Grief is a part, a normal part of the human experience. From my colleagues in Explicable Breakdown the other day to a family's outburst at the death of a loved one, grief is normal and tears are a God-given way to express the stress and emotions that come with grief. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans chapter eight, the spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And to me, I interpret that to mean that tears are an expression of those sighs too deep for words. And those tears are from the Holy Spirit. Another way to think about grief, some other ways, 
um, comes from the work of Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross from the 1970s. And she described several stages of grief, which are helpful to think about. Because again, it reminds us how normal, how universal it is. The stages she named are denial, bargaining, anger, depression, and acceptance. And it's not a step-by-step -step linear progression. You might feel these things at different times in different ways at different around the same situation. So with that as a caveat, let me briefly explain what each of those are. Denial is that time when what has happened just doesn't seem possible. It just seems surreal that what has been, that who has been, is now gone. Bargaining is a litany of what ifs and if onlys. If only she had quit smoking. If only I had checked on him. What if he had gone to the doctor had, as planned? What if God had intervened and performed a miracle? Bargaining. Anger can be expressed at anybody and everybody. It's a lashing out at people or God, somebody who could have, should have done something, anything to keep me from the pain I'm experiencing right now. Anger. Depression or deep, profound sadness at the loss. Recognizing you will never see him again, hear her again, laugh with him again, taste her delicious cookies again. Where he or she once was is just now empty space. Depression, sadness. Acceptance is the place where we realize the loss is loss. The grief is real. And we will find a new normal. And we will find ways to honor and remember the one we've lost with gratitude. And someday we will even laugh again and not feel guilty. We will remember the person without the tinge of sadness. Acceptance. So now that I've given you some head knowledge I invite you into your heart space. I invite you to be still for a moment, to engage your soul. And again, I understand if you wanna step away, I get it. But I invite you to be present to grief. Be present to the grief of the world, the grief of your community, the grief of your friends, the grief of family members. I invite you to be present to your own personal grief. Acknowledge the grief. Feel the pain of loss. Feel the sadness. The isolation. The hopelessness. The sighs too deep for words. And now from that place, where head and heart, where body, mind, and soul come together, I invite you to join me in a litany. This litany is written by Fran Pratt. 
God of comfort, restorer of all things. We look to you in times of trouble. Something has been lost. Someone has been lost whom we held dear. We feel emptiness and sadness at this loss. Comfort us with your presence. We understand that within the confines of time, all things must end. We understand the cycles of life and the seasons. Still, we find the changes painful. We acknowledge that we feel entitled to keep things, to keep people by virtue of having been given them. We acknowledge that we feel affronted and angry when the time of our keeping runs out. Give us grace to be grateful for the gifts of life, however long we get them. We accept the gifts you give and the potential for pain they arrive with. We understand that holding tightly to a thing, holding tightly to a person, is sometimes not the best way to love it or him or her. We are reminded that you hold all things in your gracious love. You are gathering all things to yourself. You have power over death, our author of life, and our first to resurrection. We trust you to care for what we have lost. And now, O oh God, we light a candle for the loss we are experiencing right now in our communities. And we light a candle for the loss we have personally experienced in this time of pandemic isolation. Oh God, help us as we stumble around, overwhelmed by pain and in our human experience, during which loss is inevitable, help us to see the divine. Amen. And may the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, so you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.